What's up guys? Happy Valentine's Day! Which is probably shit because you're here watching this video. That's okay, we all knew from the beginning that you would be alone for Valentine's Day. And I'm saying that, but I'm alone too. The perks of a long distance relationship, yeah. That's commercial anyway. <laughs> no, I'm kidding! I have someone! Happy Valentine's Day. <clears throat> but uh, that's not the subject of today's video. No, for today's video I wanted to talk to you about something important. I wanted to talk to you about the fact that homosexuality goes against nature. And the fact that... There are no bloody proofs about that! We're in 2018! Thinking that is as stupid as believing that Earth is flat! <clears throat> Some people still believe that. What? Well... Guess it was all the same people. So today, let's prove that homosexuality is natural, because it is. I hope you'll enjoy! But let's firstly clarify a few points before, shall we? About two days ago I received a comment saying, you're so gay, as an insult. First off, let's return to the etymology of the word. Being gay means being happy, cheerful, bright, if you're trying to insult me by telling me that I'm happy... Fuck yeah, I am! And secondly, if you're talking about the homosexuality aspect of the word, it's like insulting me on something that I find not only normal, uh, but a necessity. So that would be kind of like if I were to insult you saying... You breathe air. Which actually, when I think about it, is more insulting than your insult. Because... Uh, by trying to insult me this way, you do breathe too much air. Okay, so now that this is settled, let's look at a few myths that still say homosexuality goes against nature. And let's bust them. First thing first, it's a choice. Yeah? Then they must all have masochistic personality disorder. A suicide rate four times bigger for teenagers who discover they are homosexual. Some of them who hide it for their entire life because of societal pressure. They all have to go through coming out struggle, feeling that they will not be accepted. And are right about that because most of them are still not accepted by society. Yeah, that's a choice, right. The only existing choice in that is to control the sexual behavior, not the orientation. Okay, the second myth is that it goes against the supreme cucumber will. The thing is, and there's nothing scientific here, but at the same time we're talking about the supreme cucumber, so... But... See what I did? Homosexual? <clears throat> if the supreme cucumber didn't want homosexuality to exist, if he eat she is as almighty as you believe, then that wouldn't exist. Don't believe me? Well, look, the Supreme Cucumber didn't want you to be able to lick your elbow. Go for it, try. It's impossible! Cucumber didn't want? It's not possible. Homosexuality? It's here. Cucumber wanted. Yeah, but that doesn't work because it's man-made. It's a modern deviation due to the environment. Man-made like uh, global warming? Yeah, no, that doesn't even exist. It's the great cucumber who's unleashing his wrath. <clears throat> okay, well, let's return to our myth. It's a modern defiance. If by modern defiance you mean that there's almost the exact same percentage of homosexual in every single population, place, culture, in the animal kingdom and throughout the ages, then yeah, that's a modern deviance. There were homosexual in ancient Greece. Bisexuality was the norm at that time. The weird guy was the one who didn't have homosexual relationship. I mean, there were open-minded people. They broadened the potential partner pool! In the animal kingdom, more than 150 species are having homosexual behaviors. Even otters and penguins! Otters and penguins! Like, if the cutest animals on Earth are having homosexual relationships, how can that be wrong? Well, otters do rape each other, so... What?! Anyway, what I meant by that is that it's completely natural, no matter which species 
it exists. Yeah, but animals rape each other, they kill each other, and some of them even fuck with other species. So it's like if we were doing bestiality. By saying homosexuality is natural, you are saying that all those things are. Never have I ever said that everything that comes from the animal kingdom is great. However, I did say that saying that homosexuality goes against nature doesn't work because uh, nature is doing it. Okay, now let's see the last myth, which is having homosexual parents will force the kids to become homosexual. In that it's saying that the environment after you're born will have a direct impact on what you will be. But the thing is, it doesn't. And before telling you a proof, think about that. Instead of looking at becoming gay, look at becoming happy. You know, because gay happy is like... <clears throat> It's not because your parents are happy that you will be happy all your life. I mean, I wish you will be, because that would be freaking amazing! But there's no relation between the two. With all the pressure that society puts on our shoulders, being happy is harder and harder. And it's not because your parents are happy that you will be. So now let's take a look back to homosexuality. If you do have homosexual parents, and you are homosexual, well, that's going to be freaking easier to come out! But that's it. And given the entire social pressure on homosexuals' shoulder, that force them to hide, force them to not accept who they truly are, force them to try to be normal at the eyes of the society, do you really think that the impact of the parents will overcome that. And if after that you still, yeah, but uh, still. Uh... In Pillow, Thailand and Philippines, which are the three most tolerant countries toward homosexuality, mahal kita! The percentage of homosexual is almost the same as in the US, France, or any given country in the entire world. Despite the ones where being homosexual would mean you'd be killed or go to jail. Because obvious reasons? So, now that this is settled too, we can go for why is it natural and why is it there? So first off, why is it natural? Well, because it has biological causes. The great cucumber wanted it. So it doesn't come from the genes, because if it were from the genes, as homosexual cannot reproduce, the gene would die. So where does this come from? Well, epigenetics and prenatal environment. According to several scientists... BOGITOSES! No, just quick way of saying it. Everything's in the information bar below. Damn it! So those scientists have found that the sexual dimorphic nucleus of the preoptic area, SDNPOA for the close ones, is twice bigger in male brains than in female brains. And this nucleus is pretty much what explains the sexual orientation. Indeed, male with bigger nucleus will be attracted by female, and female with smaller nucleus by males. Ah, nature. But why do male have this bigger nucleus? Well, basically because during the prenatal life, male babies have a spike of testosterone that makes this nucleus. Female, on the other hand, don't have this testosterone spike, so the nucleus stay small. And on some cases, male don't have this spike, and women do have it. Which explains women with bigger nucleus, male with smaller nucleus, and fuzz homosexuality. Yeah, but there's no proof of that! Well, actually, yes, it's uh, visible on an MRI. Uh... Okay, so that explains from where the homosexuality comes from. But that doesn't explain from where the spike or the absence of spike of testosterone comes from. And that's when we are talking about epigenetics. So epigenetics is the study of the changes in organism because of the modification of gene expression rather than alteration. What's the proof it has anything to do with genes? Well, I'm glad you asked, Michel, and that's because studies have been done on both monozygotic and heterozygotic twins. Monozygotic twins, when talking about genes and faces, 
are more similar than heterozygotic twins. When looking at the heterozygotic twins, when one of the twins is homosexual, there's only 14% chance that the other one will be. But for the monozygotic ones, when one is homosexual, there's almost 70% chance that the second one will be. In fact, we can see that the more the genes are similar, the more, if we know the sexual orientation of one, we know the sexual orientation of the other. Which explains the genetic aspect of it. But how? Because all of us have it in ourselves. Yes, even you, Michel. Non, pas moi, scrognieux. Oh, tu te calmes, Michel. So I'm sorry to tell you if you're against that, but if your son or daughter are homosexual, well, that's your fault. <laughs> Once again, I will not go deeper into the studies. I mean, that's not a scientific channel. And if you want that, everything's below. That's fascinating. So now that it's proven that it's natural, stop hating on that. Because it's part of life. It is something that is because it is. Homosexuality is everywhere natural and useful. Homophobia is man-made, useless, make a call. Yeah, 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 but you still didn't say why it exists. And that's currently the only scientific hold that we have. Currently, we only have hypotheses. One of them goes back to the origins of humanity. As far as we can look back, having children was not a good excuse to not go to war or to hunt. A lot of males had to leave their homes. And one of the hypotheses is that homosexuality has been created so that those men could be there for the kids of the ones who went hunting or to war. They'd be there to raise the kids without the fright of them going with the wife. And first help for social bonding and constitution of future generations. Another one, but it's less backed up by science stuff because, you know, nature doesn't do the thing this way, is that homosexuals are here to regulate population. I mean, we see it, the numbers are growing so fast and thanks to homosexuals, we can have a sort of control of the population. And finally, and I go back to the first one, if the parents die, homosexuals can just adopt the kids to raise them. Because it's easier to adopt a kid when you don't have one than when you already have some. So in the end, just be proud of who you are, no matter what. And if you're Michel, there's no point not respecting others. We are all human beings. We are all born the way we are born. A zebra doesn't want to lose its stripes. Why would a homosexual want to be different? He is, she is, who he, she is. Born this way and will stay this way. And needs to be proud this way. Yeah, 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 well, I'm sure you are one. This is why you are protecting them. Sorry, I'm not. I'm just open-minded. Putain! And this is the end of Happy Valentine's Day. <clears throat> I mean, let's talk about homosexuality. I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to my channel. Go follow me on all my social medias because that's a gift for my girlfriend and she doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I can't wait to see her face. And no matter what happens, I will see you in my next video. Have an amazing, wonderful day. Don't forget to smile and bye-bye.